Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Electrosurgery relies upon electrically generated energy from high-frequency alternating currents to cut or alter tissue. This method differs from the mechanical cut produced by a scalpel. An electrosurgical probe becomes a thermal knife comparable to the plasma scalpel, laser instrument, or cryosurgical tip. Electrosurgical procedures provide the clinician with a convenient way to remove undesirable soft tissue. It must be emphasized that electrosurgery should be used for removal of soft tissue only and not for osseous surgery. The purpose of this program is to discuss the basic principles of the electrosurgical unit and technique and demonstrate applications of electrosurgery in restorative dentistry. The particular unit shown may be activated by a foot control or handpiece button. The foot control cord plugs into its designated outlet on the unit's front panel. Another receptacle receives the plug for the handpiece cord. Adjacent to the handpiece receptacle is the radio frequency indicator light which glows when electrical current is being sent to the cutting tip. A large metal ground plate, often termed the indifferent plate, is also plugged into the control unit and then placed between the patient and the upholstered backrest of the dental chair. The control unit is activated by the cut switch and the current output intensity to the cutting tip is adjusted with the rheostat on the front panel of the control unit. The coagulate switch is located adjacent to the cut switch. Coagulation electrodes are used to occlude the lumen of hemorrhaging vessels. Various sizes of ball electrodes used specifically for coagulation are shown. A variety of electro tips for cutting are available. Configurations from straight wire to J wires to loops are helpful when operating in areas with difficult access. Electro tips should be kept clean to bare metal. This is best accomplished with fine grit abrasive paper and should be done before and occasionally during the procedure. A clean electrode requires less operating current than one contaminated with blood and tissue debris. Damage to peripheral tissues will be minimized and healing will be more predictable when the least functional amount of current is used. As a general rule, only fine wire electrodes should be used. The large diameter tip in the upper right display should be discarded. Certain electro tips are constructed from shielded wire to help prevent damage peripheral to the cutting site. Medicaments useful during and following electrosurgery are tincture of myrrh and benzoin for its subtundin effect, hydrogen peroxide for cleansing, and periodontal dressing for packing tissues following extensive gingivectomy procedures. Tray setups must include a plastic mouth mirror, a plastic high volume evacuator tip, and a plastic saliva ejector. Metal instruments must not touch the activated electro tip since grounding with the activated electrode can result in a serious burn or other undesirable trauma. The remainder of the tray's contents are those instruments routinely used for dental procedures. All areas to be surgerized must be anesthetized. The electrosurgical procedures to be demonstrated will be a gingivectomy of a second bicuspid and molar, removal of hyperplastic ridge tissue, and sulcular preparation prior to an impression procedure.
Prosthetic treatment for this patient will be the placement of a three-unit fixed bridge replacing a missing first molar. Note the hyperplastic marginal gingiva associated with both abutment teeth and the resultant reduced width of the pontic space. A periodontal probe is used to measure the pocket depths and the width of attached tissue. Attached tissue width is an important consideration since a mucogingival defect would be created by removing too much tissue. With this particular patient, enough attached tissue is present around the second bicuspid and molar to allow a gingivectomy type procedure to be performed. Basic differences between scalpel surgery and electrosurgery can be explained with the aid of a diagram. The scalpel cut is usually a single cut that can contact the underlying bone with no ill effects. Subsequent cuts for corrective purposes are, however, usually difficult. Notice that the first electrosurgical cut is made into the sulcus, and subsequent cuts two, three, and four are fashioned to produce an arc around the underlying bone. All electrosurgical cuts should avoid bony contact. Electrosurgery is also useful adjunctively in creating space for impression material. This diagram illustrates how a J-tip or small straight loop can create a trough around the tooth which provides working room for margin refinement and space for impression material. When forming a sulcular trough on the lingual side of maxillary molars, it is often necessary to remove the palatal tissue shelf. A diamond-shaped electrotip is useful for this purpose. For this patient, the first cut is made using a fine wire loop angled outward from the tooth's vertical axis. Note that tissue debris must be frequently removed from the tip using gauze or suction. During electrosurgical procedures, the electro tip acts as a probe most of the time. The area to be cut is probed first and then cut using fast cutting movements. Practice strokes over the site are helpful prior to activating the cutting tips. Work should be accomplished in 10 second intervals per site so that heat will dissipate from the working area. Other reasonably distant sites may be surgerized during this heat dissipation interval. Tissues can also be cooled with a gentle stream of air or water. The surgical site must be semi-moist to produce ideal electrical characteristics necessary for cutting with the least amount of current. Following establishment of the sulcular trough, the periodontal pocket depth may be decreased using the diamond-shaped electro tip. Bone contact is sometimes unavoidable, and very short periods of contact, far less than one second, are probably acceptable. When in doubt, locate the underlying bone by puncturing the anesthetized tissue with a periodontal probe. With these principles in mind, the hyperplastic tissue is removed. Tissue should be easily removed from the electrode after cutting. Adherent tissue usually signals a need for current adjustment. Accordingly, the current must be increased. Excess tissue can be shaved in layers and contoured to allow for adequate pontic space and later access for margin cleansing during home care routines. Some oozing of blood is normal and desired during electrosurgical procedures. Just as the cut tissue should not adhere to the electrode, remaining tissue must not become coagulated or white. Significant and harmful tissue alteration will occur if the electrode is moved too slowly during cutting or if the current intensity is set too high. Excessive sparking during cutting indicates that the current setting 
is too high. Additionally, small electrodes are helpful because they require less current than larger electrodes. In general, tissue healing following electrosurgery will be slightly delayed during the first 10 days, but by 30 days, the degree of healing will be the same as it would have been following scalpel surgery. A shielded electrode, as shown here, is useful for producing narrow socular troughs. This type of electrode tip can be rested against the tooth, thereby maintaining better instrument control. When surgical procedures are nearly complete, the operated area can be rinsed using 3% hydrogen peroxide followed by water. With the area now more visible, previous surgical cuts can be refined by removing any remaining tissue tags and remnants. As will be noticed, the mesiodistal pontic space has been increased. At this point, the straight, unshielded wire electrode is helpful to refine previous cuts, which improves visibility and access needed for placing finish lines and impression material. Notice that the electro tip is never hot. It may be touched immediately after release of the activating foot control or switch. As a final check, an incrementally marked probe is used to evaluate remaining attached tissue and socular depth. Both prove to be within normal and acceptable limits. With good access and visibility now provided, retraction cords and medicaments are placed and then removed at appropriate times prior to impression procedures. Tincture of myrrh and benzoin is painted over the surgerized tissue in order to provide increased post-operative comfort. Once the medicament has been applied to the surgical sites, the provisional restorations are cemented with a suitable interim cement. The excess cement is removed, and the patient is dismissed after having received post-operative care instructions. These instructions are consistent with routine home care measures with the addition of hot salt water rinses during the first two days. The treated area is shown 25 days after surgery. Although healing is not quite complete, the recontoured tissue is healing in a normal and expected fashion. Electrosurgery is also quite useful in denture prosthodontics for removing papillary hyperplasia, tissue tags, and redundant tissue. Additionally, these basic procedures are useful when exposing subgingival caries prior to restorative procedures. This surgical procedure relies on the same principle of bone avoidance by forming an arc around the bone with the use of sequential cutting strokes. The first cut forms a trough, while cuts two and three form the arc which results in increased access for tooth preparation and restoration and correct tissue contour after healing. This program has presented a basic explanation of the electrosurgical instrument and principles of its use and demonstrated several clinical applications. With practice, the dentist will find electrosurgery to be a valuable adjunct to clinical practice. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. 
Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.